meeting with the Royal Council. B and I walked into the Council Chambers. The councilors were already seated and waiting for us. As Titus closed the door behind us, the Council members stood up and bowed in respect. Councilors. Your Majesty, Your Highness. Before we begin in earnest, we must acknowledge the results from our recent House of Delegates election. Hugo smiled confidently. As usual, the resident national coalition secured the majority of seats. No significant gains were made, but no losses either. By unanimous vote, Daria de Rava has retained this position of House Speaker. In a struggle to maintain a neutral expression. Brilliant, I'm glad to hear the majority of resident public still respects the authority of their monarch and his supporters. Indeed, Your Majesty. In other news, interested in Elena. Ms. Warner has some important reports to share you about our current energy situation. I'll let her speak. Thank you, Your Grace. Start with our overview of our energy situation. Luckily, we're still producing enough energy to meet our demands. Stay above the balance. She placed a stack of paper on the table. Based on our current energy, current deals and promises, including our projected energy production, we will be able to meet the demands of our industries if current projects succeed. I see. How do we approve? The Havas Coal Mine Project. Yeah, this is a good idea. There's also the RS Gas Field, of course. Yes, very good. So we're making some, some progress on the gas fields. Um, What are your projections? Our energy demands are being met, but we have additional projects that we're projecting more energy returns from. The hydroelectric dam is continuing with speed. If it, succeed, if it succeeds, our projection is that it will provide some relief with our energy industry as renewable and alternative. It will provide a strategic value for us as well. Additionally, there was a deal with the Gazom, the Assorted Jazz Giant. Unfortunately, the Assorted Energy Protection Act seriously limits foreign investment, so we weren't able to obtain the amount of shares we wanted. Although it could still provide us with some finances, we are not expecting too much in that deal in terms of energy output, of course. And finally, there's a disputed area in the gas fields. And how does that fit into our current projection? The entire field is enough to spot for decades to come, but getting the rights to half that field could also provide us with an incredible relief. We can get into the details of that later. Good news. From AN. Very good. Um, very good. Now let's hear it with the gas fields. The vote's outcome was influenced by a number of nations. The Prime Minister of Alma Sultana of Morella used her legal background to make a convincing argument on our behalf. In the wake of our country's new agreement, Whalen was very supportive of our claim. The Beatrice made a personal appearance at the end to plead our case. Chance to Hegel Bongosland made an especially heartfelt plea to uphold the original interpretation of Andor without mentioning Rizia by name. But her palace came mostly from lesbian other ATO nations, of course. In the end, we simply couldn't overcome the ATO. What the fuck? Seriously? With all that, it still didn't work. That's bullshit. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. What the fuck? <laughs> that is bullshit. What the fuck? And furthermore, we rule that the committee members are ob obliged to enforce that outcome. What the hell are you even- that doesn't even make sense. I have everybody you could possibly get. Literally everybody you could possibly get other than Lesbia. That still wasn't enough? Okay. And I know I don't have enough military to take them on, so I'm just kind of like fucked here. It's ridiculous. I, think we should, I don't think we should recognize the revolution. I say we deploy our navy to Arias, sorting our clean and blocking Pelosi and extraction. I don't think that's necessary. I'll oh, be quiet, Vina. You're a pussy. Such a move puts in a very precarious situation. There's no way the international community will approve of this. Um, you're right, we can enter risk going against the AN. Well, let's deploy our navy immediately. It's ridiculous. Genuinely, it's ridiculous. I don't have the military to be able to uh, to deal with that. I was relying on the fact that having literally everyone other than Lesbia and Palas itself on our side would work. And it didn't. What the fuck? Not sure what to do honestly 
<laughs> the Navy, deploying the Navy could be considered like a, oh, it's too drastic, and then our support could dry up. But at the same time... Screw it. Deploy the Navy. Much as the gas in Aureus is incredibly valuable for us, I don't see if we can acquire it after the Ian's revolution against us. You'd like to be condemned by the entire international community. Oh, oh come on. Deploy <sighs> the Navy. I don't think this is going to work out well. I think this is going to be the end. And it settles it then. A strong response. We have time to wrap this up. Are you really going against the Alliance of Nations? Look, Vina, I know you're against the war, but my intention is always going to strike policy one way or another. And Vina, we only go against injustice. I'm just going to test the tide. For now, we'll keep the pressure up. Maybe we can do something. I don't know. We have our own partners. Rizzi is not alone. I, I know, but... I say that now, but... I've gathered everybody you possibly could to support this. And it still didn't work. So obviously, I just don't have pull. You learn to embrace conflict when it's necessary. It's true. Can't be a can't be a coward. Do we question you? Of course not. You you all you do is question me, child. Damn coward. Oh, they congratulate us on successful elections. Isn't that nice? Rumberg says, from sister-in-law, Catholic King of you send their official congratulations. Great. The Navy ready to challenge the blockade. Oh, yeah? Okay, well, fuck you. Late night at the palace. Oh, wait, let me read the news first. Business as usual for the RNC. Sign up for the King's army. King rejects AN ruling. Poorly anxious, Rizzi amasses troops on Palace border. Gas fuel belongs to Palace and rules. I don't, still don't get that. Like it didn't even give me like 25%, and give you 10%, not even 5%, none of it. What the fuck? Ridiculous. The Golden Guard awoke me in the middle of the night. As the King, I knew such summons could only mean dire news. Not oh, great. Stay silent. We arrived at the doors of the council chambers. Hugo and Vina greeted me. Apologies for disturbing you at this hour. Thank you for being here so quickly. I'm assuming this means the war started. He hugged my arm, leaned in, and whispered. Your Majesty, i we're facing our biggest crisis yet. I must stress. This is the time everyone needs a common Brazilian leadership. He took a long look at me and looked my clothes that I'd rushed to put on. The butler couldn't be summoned in this time, I take it. He put his hand on my shoulder. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you'll do the right thing. I need to know what's happening. You're right. Let's just go in. Ah, yes. They stood up immediately upon my entrance. She did approach me to calm demeanor that contrasted with the anxious environment. This atmosphere and science, she bowed and spoke. Your Majesty, we have an emergency to report. About an hour ago, we received grave news, to put it mildly. A very serious incident at sea around the Aureus gas fields has unfolded. May the Divine God protect us. I wish it was in the way to put this. The Grand Duchy of Palace has committed an act of war. States Island just referred to continue. This is what we know so far. Approximately half an hour ago, the ships we sent to enforce our claim in the Aureus gas fields fired on and sunk a Palsian vessel. So they we shot at them first. That's not good. You you shouldn't have shot at them. That was a bad idea. The vessel was sunk with not only wounded, it managed to ram into our flagship, damaging don't even have a flagship anymore? Oh my god, this is a mess. It's an outrage. They were warned that they encroached in the field knowing that, that our navy would defend it. That's true. Our fleet only acted in defense of our nation's asset, but this is still a disaster. The sinking of a ship is a grave matter. They rammed into our flagship. It seems to be a very intentional attack to provoke a response from us, and I think they've already succeeded in their plan. I share the same opinion. And the casualties? Still ascertaining the full extent, but preliminary reports suggest multiple injuries for both the Falero. And theirs? 
You don't know yet, Your Majesty. What's the extent of the damage? Severe, Your Majesty. In fact, compromises the hull's integrity, causing severe flooding. Significant flooding in the engine room and adjacent compartments. Flare's compulsion system is heavily damaged, rendering the ship immobile. It is currently running on emergency power, but the flooding is critical. Damage control teams are working tirelessly, but without assistance, we risk losing the flagship is very high. We estimate approximately 150 sailors are engaged in containment efforts as we speak. A Palzian ship. Sustained catastrophic damage post collision. Seconds after the explosion, we shot at it by multiple shots by our frigates and capsized minutes after ramming. However, there are reasons to believe the collision was enough for it to sink, and our shots may not have been the main reason. It's too early to tell. Our initial reports indicate survivors, but they are in perilous waters, Your Majesty. Do not let them drown. We have to do something. Our efforts focus on saving the Valero and our soldiers inside. Sailors inside. How did, um, how did this even happen? So basically, they just approached us. And then we warned them, and they rammed into us. What about the then there the the remaining ships we've we have them surrounded? How do you think we should respond? We should consider comparing if the remaining ships is a bargaining ship. As I understand, we've already have them surrounded. Yes, we do. The remaining two, upon their seeing their companions' fate, cease their advance and are currently held at a standoff distance. They've completely surrounded. They're completely surrounded and now gunned. The Admiral is waiting for your orders on how to deal with the situation. Additionally, it's important that there could be survivors from the colliding ship. These are perilous waters, Your Majesty, so we do not know if we'll be able to manage a complete rescue operation without any help arriving. Our fleet is currently fully focused on holding the remaining vessels in place while trying to help the RRN Valero contain the flooding. Do you think that we can save any? Sailors from the captain's vessel deep waters, and our frigates are currently occupied with both containing. Yeah, they can't do it. Rescue team instead of diverting resources to our fleet there. No. The sailors are not a priority. Oh. Ridiculous. It's their game. Can't let them write the rules of it. However, focusing our efforts in their RN Valero is crucial. It's not only about saving by saving our flagship, which is the most expensive asset in the Navy, it's also about preventing further loss of Rizzi in life. If any of our frigates to rescue could jeopardize containment efforts on Valero, it might as well risk the escape of the Palestinian vessels. What do you think, Vina? Of course. You're stereotypical in the, uh... And if it was indeed their plan to push into the corner, we shouldn't fall for the trap. We should show the world that Rizzi has compassion even when attacked. So you're saying there's still a chance diplomatically where we could get out of this. thoughts before I announce my decision. We would not attempt to run any rescue attempts for the sailors. First duty is to our own. Focus all the efforts on the, the Valero. Dispatch the team for the mainland for the Palestinian sailors. But immediate priority is saving the Valero and its crew. Keep the frigates focused on the Palestinian ships. We must attempt both rescues. The Valero frigates and the, if you try and go for both, it's not going to happen. Maybe we have to give up the, the, the flagship. But they're gonna no, they're gonna be angry anyway because because our, our we're not gonna be able to negotiate anything. They're they're jerks. They haven't been able to I tried negotiating with them. This is this is awful. <laughs> this is awful. I can't both rescues just won't work. Release the surrounded Palazian ships and instruct them to assist their sailors. Our frigates will focus on the Valero. The bargaining ship will be good, but... I tried diplomacy consistently and it never works. Well, it works, but never with, with Palaz. They just seem to be immune to any sort of diplomatic efforts whatsoever. Uh. I don't know. I really don't know. 
We'll release the surrounding uh, Palzine ships and instruct them to assist their sailors. Our frigates will focus on the Valero. Releasing their ships is readable, but it may be a course to mitigate broader consequences. It's with decision. Oh, shut up, Vina. I don't like you anymore. I'm going to disinherit you. I'll let Rico run the fucking country at this rate. Our house and Rizzi nationals would expect to use this opportunity, though. I hope not. Is there anyone here who questions my decision? Complete silence. I believe that was all, Your Majesty. Very well. What an awful fucking situation. <sighs> King Ramesh traveling to Palace. Palace attacks Brazilian gas field. Major escalation is Rizia sinks Palestine's ship. Fucking God damn it. So much for all that. A thousands march to demand reparation repression for sailors' deaths, yeah. Exactly. This, there was no there was no purpose for me doing that. I should have just saved my own capital ship and let them fucking drown at this point. Ridiculous. And he's gonna be angry and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm so took a die of these people. Can I get can I get like chemical weapons? Just use chemical weapons on these people. Drop some like uh some VX nerve gas on these people, please. <sighs> no pleasant for your exchange, no diplomatic gestures. We played for the cameras and said we were Quickly ushered in the side as the reporters were blocked off. Of course. Duke Reinhardt entered the room. Everyone else left. Didn't speak a word until we were completely alone. King Ramus, your rust arrived here. He was a testament to the gra gravity of our situation. I wish you could say a visit today brings me comfort, but under these circumstances, I find it hard to extend the warm welcome. I tried to work with you before, big boy. I tried. I'm not going to say anything. I'll shake his hand. I'm not going to be mean, but... Look, I do not intend to allow Palas, Palas to be pushed around by Rizzi any longer. So please, listen to me very carefully. But the in ruling against you went and deployed your navy to the field in direct violation of the resolution. What right does Rizzi Navy have to block our access to the field? Not only went against the international law, you sank a Palasian ship. It's not a declaration of war. What dialogue would you possibly be after? Please help me understand, your majesty, because I am I'm a devil of time making sense of your actions right now. Rizzi's land claimed the entirety of the RS field, and frankly, I don't think Palace can do anything about it. Let's start to start on the wrong foot. We not recognize the bias and unjustified resolution of the AN. Let's be in the Western sponsors manipulated the ruling. Let's get the facts straight. Your grace, your ships were warned about that, but they not only ignored them, our ship flagship was rammed into. We're not going to win an argument with this guy. So we need to, uh... It's very, very difficult to figure out what I need to do here. Damn. Let's get the facts straight, Your Grace. Your ships were warned, but they not only ignore them, our flagship was rammed too. Until we not recognize the biased and unjustified resolution to the end, let's be in our Western sponsors, manipulated the ruling. It's on the wrong foot. I'm here for peace. That's it. I've tried talking to him politely before and being like in favor of peace before, and this dickhead didn't give me even one percent of the field. So why would I? Why would I expect peace with him? Why would I expect, expect diplomacy with him? I thought that going to the AN would provide some level of uh, leverage, maybe give us at least some of the field. It gave us none of it. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um. I can tell him to go F himself later. Let's see what he says in terms of diplomacy. He's an eyebrow piece. You're directly responsible for shrinking our ship. So tell me what is your stance to the kingdom? What are you trying to achieve? In addition to blocking the field, but the incident wouldn't have happened if your ship didn't ram into us. The damage it inflicted was extensive. It was an accident in your race. Rizzi by no means wanted to escalate the tensions. The admirals reacted on their own. That's bullshit. Your stance is clear. Orius lies within our borders, and anyone who enters the territory is subject to Rizzi law. We're deeply saddened by the incident. I like to offer our sympathies and apology and all. It's true the decision to blockade the field. But the incident wouldn't have happened if your ships didn't ram into us. The damage inflicted was extensive. You're not going to accept any responsibility? This is Rizzi's official stance then? Doesn't have to be. I accept responsibility for retaliating. You did your attack your flagship. Palace has won the escalated incident. Let's say it doesn't have to be, let's see. 
No one will you threaten palace like this, your majesty. Stand alone if need be, but we do not bow down your harassment any longer. No one wants a war. I'm here to reach a mutual understanding with you. I don't think there's going to be any level of... Okay, then we'll discuss. He straightened his back. We must pay reparation for the ships you sank. Oh, yeah. You'll never be deployed back there again. You ensure this. You have to sign an official concession. Oh, uh, no. Fuck off. I see. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's been deployed. Uh, you cannot feel to keep your navy at the field at all times, your race. You intended to escalate the situation further after all. I will let the world know about your stance. Let's see who they support. Your attack was the cause for everything, and you know that. Yeah, okay. Of course. You won't get away with this, I'll say that much. This will have dire consequences for both our countries. I'm not going to promise war, but... Well, thank you for the meeting nonetheless. Another handshake? Fine. Palace thanks King Ramos for visit. Ridiculous. No deal in Palace. Conflict between Palace and Rizia averted for now. Alignment to the six stars, and we have this. Shield cost of royal not restoration. Stop the restoration and sell the scrap. I need money, not uh bullshit. Is there anything I can do here? Low conscription age day 18. Increases military manpower and budget. It's not bad. <sighs> Border fortifications might be a good idea. Can't get a tank factory or anything like that. How much is the tank factory? Three budget, four but or uh, four budget. To get authority. I don't think there's going to be enough time for me to build that in time. I should have built that earlier. I didn't think about that. I thought that they'd be, you know, diplomacy could work, but I guess not. I guess it makes sense ultimately because the, the whole thing about this DLC is that they have, you know, the special war system, which doesn't seem to make much sense from what I've been told. So <laughs> that's why I've been trying to avoid it. You can strengthen the fortifications. Two budget, two, bu two authority, two turn construction. Let's do that. Palace Frontier to be strengthened, and Palace expresses worry at Rizia military buildup. Yeah, cry about it, bitch. <laughs> 